Okay. You can sit on this side if you want. So how do you tell an IBMers in the room? We're, we're the only guy with a tie on. <laughs> and I don't have a white shirt. I want to point that out. <laughs> Got to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. So, so Pete, tell me a little bit about, uh, about your role at, uh, at IBM. Sure. So I'm the uh, general manager of an organization. It's a global organization in 170 countries. And we provide uh, consulting, design and project services, and then manage long-term managed services all around networking. So last year, to give you a perspective, uh, we did about 18,000 contracts worldwide. So a lot of activity. Sounds like a pretty big business. It, it, want to make it bigger. <laughs> of course, that's the, way, that's the way it needs to go. So you know, what kind of, of customers do, do you and your, and your role serve today? Um, so it, it breaks into the, the largest percentage are enterprise customers. So customers that have um, enterprise data centers, uh, campus environments, uh, branch offices. But we do a, quite a bit of work with uh, communication service providers. So uh, telcos around the globe, uh, cable companies, et cetera. Um, what's really interesting for me, I went to Distribute Tech, which was down in um, San Diego earlier in January. And we do a lot of work with uh, energy and utilities. So you think about their networking needs, and you start talking about smart metering and being able to collect all that data. We do quite a bit of business with them as well. And so you're, you're offering turnkey services, you're offering professional services to overlay their own IT staff, or all of the above? Uh, it's really all of the above. So with the shifts in technology, um, there's a lot of confusion. And so, you know, I've heard some very smart people up here talking about uh, Torian, talking about how he, see, I caught you. Uh, he's texting, uh, talking about you know how he's running his networking and what he's doing from that perspective. But I, I will tell you, my, based on my experience, most of the people out there, the businesses, really do not know how to take advantage of this. They don't know you know what technologies to focus on. They don't know the pros and cons. They don't know how to avoid vendor lock-in. So we've talked a lot about openness. Um, on the telco side, what we're seeing is a shift from a lot of proprietary solutions to let's start making use of what's going on in the enterprise, in the data center, so cloud environments, NFE, SDN, et cetera. Absolutely. So uh, it's, a, it's a critical place for and I, I think that um, a lot of uh, you know, certain IT tasks just simply don't have the time to do the analysis that, that you're talking right. about. So, so they that, need a trusted advisor, and that's the role we try to play. Absolutely. So. Um, there's another big business at IBM around analytics. Can yes. you share with us a little bit about uh, what you, what's happening there? Sure. So IBM made a decision about two years ago that we were fundamentally going to switch the uh, company's focus. And we have a major focus on cloud, and that led to the acquisition of SoftLayer um, as one example. Example, we're focusing on mobility. So we have suites of products in that space and advisory services. Uh, security, I was very interested to hear John up here talk about security and a lot of the issues here, he's hearing from customers, same issues we're hearing and dealing with. But analytics, that's a huge growth uh, initiative for us. So last year, uh, we reported a little over 17 billion in revenue in analytics, and we're gonna continue to invest in that space. If you look at the period of uh, 2013 through 2018, we see it growing at over 6% per year and it's about a $263 billion opportunity. So with, with that kind of focus and demand by customers, it's an area we really want to concentrate on. But from a customer perspective, what, what we're seeing a lot of is, we, we call it the three Vs. So it's volume, velocity, and variety. Mm -hmm. So if you look at all the data out there, the amount of data that's coming to an enterprise now is just the volume is going up, the types of data are going up. It's, it, it's very heterogeneous. And the uh, velocity, how quickly it comes in, is going up. Yeah. So it's a huge opportunity, but it's also a huge source of, you know, what do I do in this space? And that's why we're focused on it, to help customers. Absolutely. So, I, you know, I'll segue a little bit about what we announced. So I believe it was February 17th, is that correct? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, thank you, that's a better way to do it. Two weeks ago, we have a, an IBM event, it's called Interconnect uh, in Las Vegas. So we have thousands of customers and partners come in. 
And uh, Juniper and IBM together, uh, first with analysts and then with the press, and then I think up on the main stage. Well, I don't think, up on the main stage. Uh, we said that IBM and Juniper were establishing a partnership. So we've had a partnership for 10 years around routing and switching and data centers and working with telcos together. But we've extended that partnership into the analytics space. So in your MX product line, your SCG product line, um, you have or will be enabling, so get rid of the thought of having to have probes out there and software embedded in the routers that will surface information to IBM analytics uh, products on a real-time basis. Absolutely. So we have a set of products called, nicknamed TNF, uh, the Now Factory. Uh, it was an acquisition we did a couple of years ago with a set of products. So we will be able to take data from your routers real-time feed them into the Now Factory set of products, and then communication service providers will be able to real time understand what's going on in their network, all the way down to what an end user is doing on a cell phone, and through programmability, actually make changes to that end user's experience. Right. So it, it's, it's really exciting. It's exciting and it's compelling, and I think that's the best name for it, because analytics that are in real time, the Now Factory, uh -huh. you know, make for a better consumer experience, which is what everyone wants at the end of the day. Absolutely, absolutely. So I, I do want to talk about, there's another step we're taking. This one's not quite as far along, but it's coming soon. Um, so now think about the data center environment. And I, I manage a large data center, a set of data centers, and I have lots of machine data and lots of other data generated by monitoring projects. I want to be able to look at that data both uh, proactively and from a predictive standpoint. I want to anticipate problems. I want to see problems as they develop and react to them. I also want to be able to go back and look at what can be millions and millions of lines of log information and search through that and look at it and say, what, what's really going on? So we have another initiative underway, and this will go through your uh, smart cloud engine, I believe it's called. Excuse cloud, me. cloud analytics engine. Cloud analytics engine. I'm not the expert on the Juniper product set. That's all right. Um, it's, it's the, day is, the day is young. The day. <laughs> um, so we'll be able to take data out of that and feed it into our predictive analytics so that an individual running a data center can actually anticipate bottlenecks or failures in the network and react to those before they occur. Absolutely. So it's all about how do we make it easier and more efficient to run the data center and maintain that high availability. That's great. So, so share, with, share with us your thoughts on, on where you see the potential for, for analytics going, just, just broad-based. Obviously, it's a big market growing at 6% right. over the next several years. Overall, addressable markets is huge. There's going to be more and more generated being, information being generated. Where do you sure. see that taking us? Well, I, I think it goes down a number of different paths, and I'm just going to talk about one path. Um, we've had discussion on uh, software-defined networking. I'm sure most of you are familiar with software-defined compute. Another growing area is software-defined storage. So when we can start taking you know, the three legs of the IT stool and, and software-define those so they become programmable, now couple it with I can describe application workloads now in software, their IT requirements, and then feed that all into orchestration. Obviously, the first thing it gives you is the ability to deploy workloads in a more efficient manner. It also gives you the ability to move workloads around. So you know, in IBM, we refer to it as hybrid IT. But the notion, we were talking about multiple cloud providers. I might want to develop on one cloud provider, but then move that workload. Mm -hmm. Well, how about now I want to get information from the environment? through analytics, in real time, through automated processes, no human intervention, add capacity, reduce capacity, mm -hmm. or move workloads around. So that's where, in a big way, we see uh, the whole move for analytics. Absolutely, that's big. And, and, and in your role, um, you know, going and talking to your customers, is, is, is analytics, does it come up, does it bubble up as a top topic of conversation? Uh, analytics, security, automation, every time. Excellent. Every time, so. That's definitely top of mind. So um, final question here, what, what do you see 
What problems do you see analytics solving for your customers? What are those things that they're actually bringing up to you when they, when they bring these things up? Um, so I'm going to do this in IBM speak. And uh, you know we, ha we have tie? our own language. Do I have to wear a tie to hear it? Or? Uh, a white shirt, anyway. <laughs> so I'll take <laughs> some. Um, we, we talk about um, systems of engagement and systems of record. So systems of record, think about the uh, trillion dollar plus investment that everyone's made in IT around the world. Now think about systems of engagement. Well, that's my iPhone or my Android or, or whatever. It's my mobile device. It's my ability to interact anytime I want with those systems of record and do it in a secure way. Um, what customers are, are focusing on is, I want to shift from delivering products to delivering services. I want to be able to do it 7 by 24. Think about banking. Think about checking your plane reservation. I want to do it in a secure manner. I want it to learn about me, mm -hmm. know about me as an individual, but I also want it to be global in nature. When you bring that view together of connecting systems of engage in, uh, excuse me, uh, systems of record with systems of engagement in a secure way and doing it so that over time applications learn about me, analytics is key. So that's, that's a big focus of ours because it's a big focus of our customers. Oh, that's great to so. hear. Well, Pete, I want to say thank you very much for taking the time. Oh, I appreciate my pleasure. it. Thank you. It's a pleasure talking to you. All right, take care. Take care.